Let's dig into some more corporate results here. Carrier out with their latest quarter, and the company's chairman and CEO, David Gitlin, joins us now to discuss. David, thanks so much for uh, for jumping on. You know, the last time that we spoke, we were really talking about the role that you expected to play in the vaccine rollout. And I'm curious if you can give us a sense of, of how that's impacted your results and um, where that you know project stands as far as you guys see it uh, as we sit here today at the end of April. You know, we were determined, Miles, from the beginning to be part of the solution. So we have one part of our transport refrigeration business that does cargo monitoring, for example. That's our Sensitech business. We were up 16 percent in the first quarter, in part because we've been working with the distribution companies and the pharmaceuticals to really be part of the solution there. So, you know, the cold chain challenges are really a, a global phenomenon. It's not only in the United States, but what we're seeing overseas as well is we do need a better sustainable cold chain solutions. And I think we we can connect a lot of the, those dots through our partnership that we have with AWS, with our Lynx platform. So we're really energized to, have, to be part of the solution there long term. And, and what does that long-term solution look like? I mean, as you talk about sort of the next phase of and the next phase of the technology um, to address these kinds of challenges, David? I think it's the same phenomenon you're seeing in every industry, which is a data-driven economy, which is in many parts of the cold chain, you're fine within your one, within your one wheelhouse. The challenge is when you connect all the parts of the cold chain, you, def you see some kind of issues when you have excursions that are outside of controlled temperatures. So our, our solution with AWS is to use data to provide technical differentiation. David, we uh, got some good news here in New York City. Well, Julian and Miles are in Jersey, but I'm in New York City and, and, and the, the city is going to open again, full capacity July 1st, very good. Are you seeing an influx uh, in orders for HVAC equipment? Uh, because the reality is buildings have been closed for over a year. I imagine they have to be upgraded. We are, we're seeing orders uh, significantly, both in light commercial, which is as restaurants start to show signs of reopening, retail showing early signs, and then the applied market, sort of the, the large commercial office space. We are seeing nice order trends there. One of the key early indicators is architectural drawings, because that usually predates construction activity by about six months. When you look at the architectural billing index, you'd like to see it north of 50. It went through 11 months that it was below 50, it got as low as 29. We now just saw some of the highest rates we've seen in years. It's at 55. So that's a great early indication that construction activity is picking up in the U.S. and frankly, picking up globally. China's been strong for a number uh, for a number of months, but we also saw a nice rebound here in Europe with order trends picking up. So our backlog is now up in the mid-teen range going into the second quarter. So we do see some really encouraging signs as societies start to reopen. And I guess, David, you know, on that point about um, new construction as well, you know, we talked to, to your old friend, uh, Judy Marks, who's over at o Otis now, and um, certainly they have the same sort of mix where a little bit is going to be maintenance and refurb of, you know, products that maybe haven't been used all that much in the last year. But as you generally see the CRE landscape where, you know, you're going to be playing a big part, does it, I mean, how much further ahead of, of maybe your expectations, even from a quarter or two ago, does that market seem to you today? Because kind of a, across the space here, we could talk to food manufacturers, we do HVAC, we can do construction. Everyone is is basically more bullish than they, than they would have been a few months back. We are for sure. We actually came into the year quite bullish. In fact, when we saw some of this pent up demand, we saw some of these early indications of outsized order growth, we actually authorized our supply chain to stock more than 50 million of inventory, anticipating there'd be shortages. It's always harder to manage the ramp up than it is to manage the ramp down. So we did our best to try to get out in front of some of this pent up demand, but the demand we're seeing is widespread. When you see North American residential HVAC up 50% year over year. Transport refrigeration is up more than 20% in the fourth in the in the first quarter. We're seeing it in that applied space. We're seeing it in our fire and security portfolio showing really strong signs of nice recovery there for organic growth. So, it's a global phenomenon. It's widespread. Not every country is obviously in the same situation, but we are seeing especially in North America, China very very strong growth and Europe really starting to catch up. David, by the way, I apologize for the noise earlier. That's one of the pitfalls of being in suburban New Jersey is the 
constant lawn work outside of my house in my neighborhood. <laughs> uh, just in third, sorry, in 30 seconds, are you being affected by the chip shortage at all that seems to be affecting nearly everyone? We are. I think it is affecting everyone. Now, we did stock a fair amount of electronic components, so I think we are managing it. We're continuing to support our customers' demand, but we're really putting our supply chain organization through quite a ringer here to keep up with that. So yes, it's impacting us, but I honestly believe we're managing quite well. Same with commodity headwinds. We know that we have to raise prices to kind of offset some of the inflationary pressures, but in terms of keeping up with demand, the team's done, it's not easy, but the team's done a nice job of supporting that demand. All right, David Gitlin, Chairman, CEO at Carrier. David, always great to uh, get some time with you. Thanks so much for jumping on. I know we'll talk soon.